If you were waiting to find out how BJ survived calling in a nuclear strike on his location while bleeding out, well, yeah, that just didn't happen. The resistance members just assumed BJ was lying about being clear and came back for him in the helicopter. Blessing to have finished the work I was put on this earth to do. BJ is what we call a shy narrator. He whispers because he doesn't want you to hear it. We are out. Fire. Yes, madam. You'll want to be putting some more distance between you and Death's Head's castle before nuking it. The shockwave would blow your helicopter right out of the sky. And then there is the heat and radiation to worry about. And I'm pretty certain Max just blinded himself since he was staring at the castle when the nuke went off. I recall another game that started off with the main character waking up from a coma during a Nazi raid. It was called Wolfenstein The New Order. Part of me suspects Machine Games doesn't really understand this whole sequel business. That you're supposed to use a sequel to tell a new story that builds on the previous one. Not build a replica with a different color of paint. Not everything is copied from the previous game though. They've thrown in a tragic childhood for BJ with a horribly racist father that forced him to kill the family dog. While it was a nice attempt, it doesn't change the fact that BJ is more of a tractor that mows down Nazis than a human. After six months of being in a coma, BJ's body is not atrophied at all and retains all of his upper body strength and ability to instantly kill Nazis. His only physical degradation comes from the injuries he sustained at the end of the last game. Do you remember that part in the first game where BJ wakes up from a coma and has to kill Nazis while crawling on the ground? Let's do that again, but this time give him a wheelchair. In reality, BJ would go no further than his room, since he wouldn't be able to roll the chair over the bulkheads. Submarines are not made to be wheelchair friendly. Your body is broken. You understand? Your kidneys are failing. If BJ's kidneys are failing, he should have been hooked up to a dialysis machine and an IV drip, yet the only thing he was connected to was a catheter. These Nazis saw their teammates get exploded by microwaves just a second ago. They continue walking down the hallway to meet the same fate. This isn't Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. You don't have to keep sending your men down the obviously booby-trapped hallway. Set, help me find the sail platform elevator. You should already know where the sail platform elevator is. You were the one who captured this U-boat after all, and operated out of it for a while before your coma. A Nazi soldier that got the drop on BJ decides that tackling and strangling him is a better option over shooting him. Anya appears from the ether to save BJ. It's like BJ picked the mysterious stranger perk in Fallout. Why would they service their nuclear-powered U-boat in the middle of the ocean in the first place? And I'm pretty sure that U-boat outweighs the airship and can drag it below the surface if they dived. Villain is introduced feet first cliche. Ingle, who you may remember ran a concentration camp that BJ snuck into and freed all the prisoners from, was promoted a general and given the Nazis' most advanced airship. I can't really see the reasoning for that promotion when the only thing worth saying about her is she let a member of Doss who could and BJ Blazkowicz escape. Right when Ingle is about to carry out her revenge on BJ, she decides to chastise her daughter over her weight instead. I guess fat shaming became a priority on the Nazi agenda after taking over the US. I can't lose you. You're weak, William. You're in no shape to fight. I'll find a way. He doesn't find a way. BJ basically counts on something miraculous happening, which it does. <laughs> You going to run us over with your little wheelchair? That didn't sound like a German accent. That didn't even sound like someone trying to fake a German accent. And this Nazi was speaking German when BJ turned himself in. <laughs> Punching Caroline in the chest can apparently make her armor come off, which seems like a pretty big design flaw for something made for combat. This game is going to hit every plot beat from the first game. In just the first hour, BJ has awoken from a coma after sustaining massive injuries at Castle Wolfenstein, being captured by a villain from a previous game, and then held down and forced to watch as said villain kills one of his comrades. I like that game too, but this is turning into an Evil Dead sequel where it's more of a remake than a continuation. As twisted and dark as this is, BJ's father killing the family dog had more of an impact on the how could you meter of emotional trauma. Fergus holds up pretty well for a guy who just had his arm cut off. A normal human would pass out from blood loss and falling blood pressure pretty quickly, but he manages to shoot several Nazis and be strangled by a giant superhuman before ever getting a tourniquet on it. Give me one good reason not to blow your brains out right fucking now. Real slow like- She saved you from having your head cut off like Caroline and gave you the gun you used to kill the guards. When Caroline wore this armor, it allowed her crippled body to take on super soldiers barehanded. Yet BJ seems completely normal. All it does is let him walk again. After releasing the U-boat, they submerge it even though BJ is still on board the airship, and they have no way of knowing if BJ has a way to get back to them while underwater. That escape pod was made solely for evacuating by water since it's a sub, yet this airship spends most of its time over land. This seems like an excellent way of contracting sepsis. Just use a dirty electric drill to attach a prosthetic right to the bone. Could this not have waited until they were away from danger? Caroline had a plan. Yes, the liberation of the United States of America. <sighs> Caroline wanted to free the US and use it as a stepping stone to liberate the rest of the world. While I don't disagree on the grounds that you had to start the revolution somewhere, there's nothing to stop the Nazis from nuking the US back into submission. It would be far more difficult for Germany to nuke European countries due to potential fallout hitting Germany. And your resistance is stationed in Europe and already has connections there. The Ausmerzer has been receiving messages from someone inside your board. That's how we found you. Fuck on who? Section F. While someone broadcasting your position from the inside of the ship would help Ingle find you, she wouldn't need that broadcast to accurately drop death charges at your U-boat. You were making so much noise that it would be impossible not to pick the U-boat up on sonar, so stopping the broadcast wouldn't end the attack. But there is no Section F. 
Uh, the maps are not accurate. We've looked and there is no door there. There is an entire section of the U-boat that was sealed off by the Nazis when VJ took over the ship, and they have been holed up in there for six months, unknown to the resistance. Transmitting the U-boat's location and only now did the Nazis locate them. It's also pretty difficult to buy this. They had the ship blueprints on hand telling them where Section F is, and they couldn't find it because a locker was shoved in front of the access hatch. So they just assumed the blueprints were wrong and there was no Section F. Stupid, but fine. That's the direction you want to go in. Now explain where they got the nuke to destroy Deathside's castle when all the nukes are stored in Section F. Also, the Nazis holed up in Section F could have easily scuttled the ship to prevent BJ and the Resistance from using it. They had a stockpile of nukes down here with them. Also, one single attack the U-boat, why didn't these Nazis inside join the assault? The Resistance would have been caught completely off guard. Attack from above and within. All they've known. All they felt. Narrating to yourself is the first sign of insanity, BJ. This is the body of a squirrel monkey and the head of my beloved Siamese kid, Shoshana. Keep in mind, Dossi Kid members pursue science as a way of growing closer to God. So what better way to do that than perverting God's creation? You see, <clears throat> in order to do a cross-species head transplant, you need to A, bridge the spinal column, she's okay, B, harmonize otherwise totally recalcitrant biological system, respiratory and circuitry. I can buy a head transplant from one cat to another, but a cat's head onto a monkey's body is a whole other thing. A cat has a completely different diet, instincts, biology, and motor coordination from a monkey. How would a cat ever learn to properly control a monkey's body or eat a monkey's diet which would consist mostly of fruit? My cat freaks out if it gets a piece of tape stuck to its paw. Please help me. What happened to your face? I think she's trying to kill me, Blasco. Once your prosthetic arm begins attempting to kill you, you have to consider of having it as a bigger disability than not. I mean, Fergus pilots helicopters. This thing could send him and his passengers to their deaths. The New York City Resistance Group is concealed at the top of the state building. Uh, said I assume the high altitude means the radiation is at tolerable levels. Definitely. <laughs> right. However, we can simply fly in there in our Nazi helicopters because we're gonna be shot down. Technically, there are no Nazi markings on your helicopter. And these are experimental choppers that you stole in the last game that presumably have yet to enter service. So they wouldn't necessarily be identified as Nazi choppers. The whole city is saturated by fallout from the Nazi atom bomb. How much resisting can you do inside the abandoned radioactive ruins of a city? That seems more like a daily struggle to survive instead of fighting the power. Suddenly, I'm getting fallout flashbacks. This subway train still works. Any ideas where it's getting power to run inside of a city that was nuked over a decade ago? You might be willing to accept that BJ could survive being thrown from a crash like that due to the armor he's wearing. But Caroline was knocked out cold by a blow to the head with a pipe. Also, you have to consider BJ's internal injuries. He's being held together by this power armor. His kidneys are failing, most of his stomach is gone, and he can only walk due to the suit. Being thrown around would likely finish him off since the suit isn't going to stop impacts from injuring him further. BJ retracted his helmet just in time for him to be threatened by the resistance fighters who were waiting for him at the top of the ladder. Then he puts it back on to protect himself before retracting it again while still being under threat. Let me put this pen back in. Shit! <laughs> Relax, man. He's just a death. You thought BJ was a Nazi and ambushed him as he came up the ladder. You had no idea if he was going to attack you or not, so why would you bring a dead? Wolfenstein 2's boob rendering tech- no, oh, this just got awkward. I don't really know how to handle the situation, so I'm sinning and moving on. Smoking near a baby. Hell, smoking near a baby while living in a radioactive city. This kid will be lucky if he hits 10. What are you thinking in a moment like that? When you know you're losing everything you love. What are you thinking in a moment like that, huh? God damn it, the acting in this game isn't on point. Not what you would expect given the source material. There's pigs, lots of them coming up the stairs. They're like a fucking army. Shh, the fuckers found us. What's more surprising is they only found you now after all these years. This building is the only one still standing and the only one high enough where Fallout would be at tolerable levels, which should have narrowed down their search considerably. Come and fucking get me, you white ass fascist Nazi pigs. Ignite a revolution. Shit. We've been fighting every motherfucking day, Blazkowicz. White America, though? <laughs> They'd have packed up and given in. I foresee a spirited and civil discussion about the political themes of this game in the comments of this video. So if you still got some Nazi fighting killing skills up in you, then guess what? <laughs> I got a plan that's gonna send shockwaves throughout the nation. Oh, shit. Is this the one where I go home to Roswell? Grace came up with a plan to blow up the Ober Commando with a nuke before she even knew about BJ's supply of nukes on the U-boat. You got nukes on this boat? Yes, we do. There's a stockpile of nuclear warheads downstairs in Section F. You should actually have nukes besides the ones in Section F. You did use a nuke to destroy Death's Head's castle before you even knew about Section F. After they were all nearly killed due to ignoring Section F, you would think they would have cleared this section and secured the warheads. Instead, they sealed it off with a bunch of Nazi super soldiers still inside, along with drones and a couple dozen nuclear bombs. Huh? Hey, why, why won't you at least try? 
because I'm fucking dying. Anya would already know that BJ's kidneys are failing since they would have been keeping him alive through dialysis. Also, it's very unlikely that Seth wouldn't have told her BJ's diagnosis while he was in a coma. Yet the game acts like Anya is only just finding this out. Now the Haas 2 helicopter is spinning up in the hangar. Head on up to the hangar and make sure that Haas 1 is mission ready. You just told Super Special the chopper was spinning and waiting to take him back to Roswell though. Hey Englishman! You got nukes on this ship, did you know that? Oh, is that why it only took one of them to level Death's Head's entire fucking compound? Apparently they weren't aware that they had more nukes on board. The ones in Section F they only just discovered. Thank, thank you. My god. <laughs> was that alright? No, that was terrible. You're butchering my beautiful language. It's danke schön, verdammt. Say it! Literal grammar Nazi. Since we're reusing all the story beats from the last game, let's have BJ Incognito be interrogated over drinks just like that scene on the train in the last game. The plan was for BJ to meet Super Spech here at Spech's family diner. He had Spech left up all the wanted posters with BJ's face on them on his diner walls. At least draw a mustache on them if you're not going to take them down before he arrives. Blast, we shut the fucking front door! Anyone looking through the door would see the dead Nazi on the floor. Take a look at this. Huh? Pulled that baby right out of the crash site. Now does that look like something that came off a weather balloon? This thing is the rare sequel baiting Chekhov's gun, meaning it's implied to be greatly important. But we'll have no payoff since they are waiting for the sequel to show you what it does. So you reckon what you saw was a spaceship? I'm, I'm not saying it's a flying saucer from outer space. Would that be so hard to believe? I mean, the Nazis have flying saucers right now. No, okay, I'm not saying it's space aliens, right? But it goes without saying it's fucking space aliens! You actually went there. You used the ancient alien meme. You know, despite sending this game, I think very highly of it. All that respect, whew, right out the window. Papa dug these tunnels to the underground train system that connects all the top secret military bases. Neither the Americans nor later the Nazis noticed the tunnel exit Spech's father dug that connected to their underground cargo loading station, even though it's in plain sight and is even lit up. So, you want the Nazis to leave the warhead alone once you planted it, right? Well, what you gotta do is place it in the Oberkommando's nuclear reactor. That way the Nazis won't be able to track its radiation signature. If they can track the radiation signature of the nuke, why haven't they already done so while BJ carried it here in a backpack? Also, throwing a nuke inside the reactor core would see your nuke destroyed by the heat. BJ just received a lethal dose of radiation by standing in front of an exposed reactor core with his helmet off. I highly doubt your two-way radio would be capable of sending a detonation signal to the nuke which is miles away deep underground inside a shielded nuclear reactor core. Since BJ's childhood home was on the way to Roswell, Maybe he should have stopped here to get his mother's ring before he traveled to Roswell and nuked the Overcommando. Because the Nazis know who he is and where he came from, meaning they would likely be watching this place. What kind of chewing gum you like? Engine scouts? I really don't want to say this in this context during this scene, but that's racist. I heard on the radio you'd been sighted up near Roswell. I figured you might show up here. Did you walk here? There was no vehicle parked out front. BJ's dad became a Nazi collaborator and turned his Jewish wife in. After BJ awoke from his decade-long coma and started tearing the Nazi regime apart, I suspect he would have fallen from grace. But according to him, that hasn't happened as of yet. There's also the matter that he married a Jewish woman and had a half-Jewish son. What help could he have possibly provided to the Nazis to make him so valuable to them? He was a down-on-his-luck small business owner before they invaded. Chopping off someone's arm followed by the finishing blow is BJ's preferred execution method. He uses it twice in this game. Who'd you call? I heard everything. You kept phone service running to a house you haven't been to in over a decade? Got to save Stop and think about this for a second, BJ, and I think you will see the problem with attacking these grapple arms. They are the only thing holding this house up in the sky. And once you release them, you and the house will fall back to Earth. BJ survives this. Since Super Spech is a former lawyer, he has to know that the Nazis didn't really care for due process and staged show trials. He basically committed suicide by even attempting this. What I'm gonna do? So I'm gonna make like you attacked me, and when the guard pig comes in looking for your ass, I'm gonna sneak up behind him, and I'm gonna shove this little number right into the base of his skull. Is this really the best plan the Resistance could come up with? This is a group that normally comes up with daring plans to take the Nazis completely by surprise. Like impersonating high-ranking officials to get to the moon to steal arming codes for nukes, and infiltrating concentration camps as prisoners. But this plan came right out of a bad crime movie. It was space aliens, man! <laughs> This is how all memes should be dealt with. With the escape attempt foiled, BJ dreams of an even more cliche and ridiculous escape attempt during his trial. Therapists should really consider hallucination therapy to resolve patients of their inner conflicts. It works wonders in games. BJ survives this. Seriously, he gets better. The plan to rescue BJ's head after he was executed relied on a lot of random factors going in their favor. First, that Ingle wouldn't display BJ's head to the crowd for very long before dropping it in the furnace, since they have limited time to connect BJ's head to their equipment. Second, 
that they could even catch a thing with a drone and drop a fake head in its place. This is the same group that came up with that stupid lawyer plan that got Spish killed. Yeah, they came to luck. We have less than seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20. We need to give his brain oxygenated blood or it will die. Apparently, keeping a decapitated head alive requires only an oxygenated blood supply. There are several complex electrical and neurological impulses that when taken away go dead quickly. So even if you can keep the head alive, the brain will go brain dead. They've turned BJ into a Futurama character. Some time ago, Caroline obtained this latest generation biologically engineered super soldier body from a Nazi scientific lab. Considering that the lab-grown Nazi super soldier lacks a head, I have to assume the Nazis are also skilled in head transplants and that's how they've been making their super soldiers. However, Sit claimed to have invented it only recently when he attached his cat's head to a monkey. You can choose. Blink once for this one, blink twice for the one in the middle, blink three times for that over there. You want to tell him what they do first? BJ is a head in a jar. He doesn't get the text pop up the player does when you examine them. Let's not forget that this is the same doctor who attached a prosthetic arm to Fergus that is now trying to kill him. What happened in the garage? In the garage? First time you tried to rescue me, Frau Angle's men attacked you in the garage. I heard the gunshots. Oh, that was nothing. We had some tricks up our sleeve. In other words, we're not going to explain how they got out of that ambush alive. Just accept it and move on. This is real. Or am I in heaven? I'm with you on this one. I think you died when Engel decapitated you, and this is just the last remaining neurons firing. This one of yours? What's this? Whoa. Where did you get this? Especially had it back in Roswell. Said he found it at the crash site in 47. It looks like no, it can't be. It's history. But it. Oh! Gotten you. Gotten you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just handed me a plot device. I'm now distracted beyond my capacity to answer any questions about it for the rest of the game. Buy the sequel if you want to know what it does. Now before we arrive in New Orleans, we need to make a quick detour into Manhattan. We need to pad the runtime of this game a bit. So instead of hurrying to New Orleans to stop the Nazi death squads from killing Gordon and his resistance fighters, we're going to sail right past New Orleans and go back to Manhattan to grab some documents from a Nazi bunker that never factor into anything. I've been so absorbed with this artifact you brought into my attention. Absorbed and angry. Buddy, I'm going to have to buy the sequel to find out what it does. You have nothing to complain about. Anya is a badass, but she's pregnant with twins. And firing guns while pregnant is something doctors will warn you against since the kickback can induce early labor and cause you to lose the baby. Anya is the last person who should be doing field missions. William J. Blaskowitz. Blaskowitz? Terror belly hellfire, son. Ain't you supposed to be dead? I recovered. I think if I met someone who had their head cut off on live TV walking around, I would have a few more questions for them before accepting everything they say is fact and inviting them inside. I don't see the reason for going to all this trouble of recruiting Horton. He's a well-written character, no doubt, but his contribution to the rest of the game is zero. He doesn't do anything. If that moonshine got BJ drunk enough to pass out with just a few sips, it got him too drunk to then get on a fire-breathing saber-toothed tiger robot and fight Nazis. On the other hand, there's a segment where you ride a fire-breathing saber-toothed tiger robot to battle against Nazis. I reckon all them Nazis between here and yonder might slow us down dearly. Wager I can get their attention. I was under the impression that the whole robotic tiger was supposed to get their attention so you could escape. Just to recap, the Nazis corralled all the undesirables into New Orleans and built a wall around it to keep them here in a ghetto prison. By nuking the city to free your beach U-boat, you just killed everyone in the city who didn't get out, which was really only Fergus and his small group. Truly, you are a man of the people. If we ignite a revolt, you can be sure the Osmers will swoop in, put an end to it, break and say hell's bands. Are we gonna start this revolution? We need to put an end to the Osmers firstly. So then we mount a surprise attack, conquer the Ausmercer, and use it against the Nazis. Or you could just destroy the Ausmercer. You have nukes on board, and you know if you start trouble, it will show up. But let me guess, it's going to be our base of operations in the sequel, and there will somehow be some Nazis hidden on board it for some action scenes in between missions. That's how the home base played out in the first two games, after all. All of their top brass, all their top military secrets have been moved to a fully secured base on Venus. Why in the hell would the Nazis put a base on Venus? The planet is a pressure cooker that's about as unfriendly to life as it gets. I know Mars is already the setting for the Doom series, which is also by it, but this just makes the Nazis look stupid. There is no way you are making it to Venus, sunshine. Except maybe there is. 
In two days, final auditions for the role of the infamous terrorist William Terror Billy Glaskowitz take place on the enigmatic Aristat Habitat on Venus. News Ex Machina. One of the hopeful actors is Jules Redfield, here getting a snack from his favorite milkshake bar in his hometown. I mean, damn, there's even an actor that looks just like BJ that he can impersonate, and the news broadcast even said where to find him. They might as well follow this up with a segment on how to sneak into off-world bases while disguised as an actor. Also, this mission with BJ wearing a disguise to travel to a Nazi base in space to get codes for something is just like the one in the first game where he went to the moon. So be sure to memorize your lines before the producer gets here. He has a volatile disposition, so be careful what you say and do in his presence. No one, and I mean no one, would be playing the pronoun game when the pronoun is Hitler. I used to do uh, broadcasts uh, when I was younger. Nowadays, it's all pictures and TV. Ronald Reagan? How the hell did the political outrage section of the internet miss this opportunity? <laughs> I'm not sure how canon Wolfenstein 3D is these days, but I assume since Hitler is alive in this game, it means Hitler and BJ never met. So the only thing Hitler has to go by in regards to BJ's appearance is what he's been shown. And BJ, even in disguise, looks just like BJ. Honestly, this scene with Hitler on Venus trying to produce his propaganda movie about BJ is the high point of this game. It owns the campy pulp by remaining genuine to the characters who do an amazing job acting out the nonsense. I loved it, Mr. Hitler. Super good. Mr. The other two actors must be really good at method acting since they don't react at all after Hitler killed Ronald. I get it. Hitler's sick and gross. He's both pissed and thrown up on the floor. Is he going to drop his smoking jacket and take a dump on the carpet next? Ingle is on live TV as the one who captured BJ and cut off his head. I'm not sure how Hitler plans to retell this story so that he's the one who did it. Neither Hitler nor Helena notice BJ reading his lines off his hand. Is that what you wanted? Is that what you had in mind? You Nazi assholes. Cause that's all you're getting. This isn't BJ acting. This is BJ breaking his cover for no reason, and looking out that Hitler thinks it was someone accurately portraying BJ, who Hitler has never met until now and has no idea if this is an accurate betrayal. They keep hatchets on a space station on Venus? For what reason? The base in the upper atmosphere of Venus where Hitler lives is one thing. That's actually not as unrealistic as it sounds, with Earth-like temperatures and atmospheric pressure. The surface, however, is a different story. BJ is wearing little more than a rubber suit that zips up. Not only would the surface temperature melt the suit and cook BJ, the air pressure, which is 90 times that of Earth, would crush him like a tin can. BJ learned how to operate elevators from the Doom Marine. That monitor is a radar dish, so I don't think it's going to help you find the Odin codes. Anyone can just walk up to this computer and print out the Odin codes whenever they want. Did the Nazis learn nothing from the time BJ printed out nuclear arming codes from their moon base? BJ flies a flying saucer from Venus back to Earth and even survives a crash landing in the ocean. This is exactly the same BS that was pulled when he escaped from the moon in the last game. He would not know how to pilot that thing, navigate in space, or re-enter the atmosphere without dying. Also, the trip between Earth and Venus would be months long. Be ready for anything. That's a great way to get yourself shot by a high-strung man with guns. This game is about 90% over at this point, yet this goes on for some time. It's no wonder the game just sort of ends without a satisfying climax. Conceivable. It's the end of the game. Stop going on about something that won't be important until the next one. I decrypted the Odin codes Hep Leskovich brought back from Venus. Turns out it's just one simple word. Valhalla. Are you for real? BJ went all the way to Venus to learn that password and it was something anyone trying to crack a security system called Odin would try on their first day of cracking. At least he's a few random numbers and symbols. Don't ever call me a Nazi again! I am not a Nazi! You do not have the right to label me as something I am not! I'm very happy they went with this direction with Sigrun, since I was expecting her to turn on him because none of them would give her a break. Pregnant women should really not be tucking and rolling out of a helicopter. I would really like to know how anyone reads ship schematics off a radar monitor. Watch out! Before Anya threw those grenades, the Nazis had already opened fire on BJ and fired for several seconds, meaning he should be dead. I can say with all honesty that this is something I have never seen in a game before. This finale hardly feels like the finale. In fact, this feels like the midpoint of a game that was cut in half. BJ uses the code to shut down Odin, fights two Nazi robots, takes control of the airship and then kills Ingle with a hatchet on live TV. The game ends right as they inspire the American people to rise up. With this ending and the bronze key set kept going on about, I think they were more interested in sequel bidding than giving this game a satisfying ending. I hate these guys.